Hey everybody, welcome back. They called me crazy. I'll show you crazy. Whoever this girl is, I feel very bad for you because you have unleashed a monster. Call me crazy if you want, but I've never liked store-bought pesto. Wow, Susie, that is wild. <laughs> I've never had store-bought pesto, but when my oldest was a baby, one time we were at her dad's parents' house for Christmas, and on Christmas Eve, he and his sister and the sister's husband got absolutely wrecked, wasted, drunk, and they stayed up like all night partying, and at 2.30 in the morning, I heard the baby wake up, so I went and, you know, tried to get her settled back down to sleep, but they were being so loud, she wouldn't go back to sleep, so I went to go ask them to quiet down, and instead of quieting down they started berating me and saying I was like a buzzkill and like a stupid bitch and like just being really mean um and then my her dad my boyfriend at the time tried to run into the baby's bedroom and climb into the crib with her to get her to go to sleep when he was really drunk and I'm like that's not safe you <laughs> can't do that so I'm trying to pull him out of the crib and his sister is trying to pull me off of him and so I'm like absolutely not so I take the baby down to the downstairs basement bedroom and I lock us in there and they just went back to partying and drinking so i was really mad so i went out to the basement rec room where the sister and her husband were supposed to be sleeping that night on this brand new air mattress and i took a thumbtack and i poked a bunch of holes in the air mattress so that when they finally went to bed it would slowly deflate over the course of the evening oh. and when they woke up in the morning they'd just be on like the hard basement floor <laughs> And then later, when they eventually ah. did go to bed, I, like, sneaked upstairs where my boyfriend was now sleeping on the living room floor. So they were all sleeping on the floor. And they had left all these half-empty beer bottles all around the house. So I collected a bunch of them, and I dumped them into all their shoes. Oh. So that when they got up in the morning, they would think that one of the guys had pissed in all their shoes. <laughs> so then the next morning, when they woke up, and they were, like bodies aching from sleeping on the floor and like head pounding like hung over and the baby's like up bright eyed and bushy tailed <laughs> with access to every noisy toy known to grandparents yes. and they go to go outside to have a smoke and they slide their feet into their shoes which oh. are soaking wet and full of what they immediately believe to be piss <laughs> I just had a really Merry Christmas. Also, the baby in that story <laughs> is an adult now, and she's on this app. And let me tell you, if you breathe one word of this to any of the people involved, you're not going to get an Easter basket anymore. Girly Pop, I think it's f safe to say that if you're putting it on TikTok, they're going to they're gonna see it. They're going to see it. But I'm not mad about it. I honestly think that was worth it. Don't mess with a mama and her baby. Hell hath no fury like a mama who's trying to put her baby to sleep and can't because there's people partying and making lots of noise and drinking lots of beers. Have a nice cold pint and wait for all this to blow over. Absolutely not. Nope. And to think, it all started from a harmless little TikTok about store-bought pesto. Call me crazy if you want, but I've never liked store-bought pesto. <laughs> I once made out with a Croatian man who had no teeth outside of a nightclub in Florence, Italy. I didn't realize he had no teeth until my friend tapped, tapped, tapped me on the shoulder and I took a step back and she goes, hey, Heather, he has no teeth. And then I felt around my tongue against his gums. There was one tooth. It was a loose tooth. Oh. Kind of like a, like a tic-tac just <laughs> rolling around on the back of the gums. <laughs> Anyways, that was my study abroad. <laughs> Like, we all know about beer goggles, my friends, but like, I feel like the teeth, the teeth are something that would not be distorted. You know what I'm saying? Have you ever seen celebrities with no teeth? <laughs> Literally what I'm picturing. <laughs> you kissed that! Yeah! Wait, is there one with Drake? Drake's really funny. Drake, Drake. Ah! <laughs> That's what you made out with, babes. How? How? So this one might actually be an original experience. 
Yeah, yeah, babes, you're kind of alone on that one. I think it's a little difficult to, like how did that begin, you know? Were you were you talking? Like, did he have a mask on? Like, how did you not know? And it's not even like the fact that you were making out with somebody with no teeth. It's that your friend told you you were making out with someone with no teeth and you proceeded to make out with him again and use your tongue to feel the teeth or lack thereof. Feeling around in those gums. Discovering a Tic Tac. <laughs> oh, brother. Call me crazy if you want, but I've never liked store-bought pets. That is super crazy, but let me tell you about <laughs> this one. One time, it was actually my wedding night. I had just checked in to my suite for the night with my new husband, and he said that he was gonna go out and get us one more drink so we could chill out in our loft hotel room and have a drink together. He didn't come back for several hours. I had no help getting out of my wedding dress. Uh, it had little uh, loops on over the buttons and I could only reach so far. I ended up having to tear myself out of it, which broke my heart because I actually had to rip a wedding dress that I loved. And then I finally got bored sitting around and I was extremely tired, so I went to bed. Um, in your he wedding dress? to any texts or calls. And um, then he came in at four in the morning and yelled at me for being asleep because he wanted to... And then I stayed in that marriage for five years. Yours is really crazy though. Where did he go for hours on your wedding night? What could he possibly have been doing? Hey man, better late than never. I understand it took you five years to get out of it, but like, holy cannoli. It's the wanting to get laid after disappearing on your wedding night for me. Like the audacity. The audacity of this man. That is crazy girl. A lot crazier than store-bought pesto. I like store-bought pesto. The key is you gotta get the Genovese store-bought pesto from Italy. You know what I'm saying? The stuff that comes from the sauce. I might have pesto tonight. In fact, I have a craving now. Crazy, right? Never like store-bought pesto. Oh my God, girl. That is so crazy. <laughs> so this one time I walked into my bachelorette party and my boyfriend decided to tell me that instead of getting married in three weeks, um, he thought it would be best if we just never saw or spoke to each other ever again. So I was so upset about getting broken up with three weeks before my wedding, I cried my eyes out. Well, I wake up in the morning and I can't open my eye. It hurts 20 out of 10. So I drive myself to the optometrist. I'm one eyeballing it the whole way there because I refused to let him take me because I was still mad. And when I get there, they tell me I had a scratched cornea, like probably from my long nail scratching in my sleep. So they put an eye patch on my eye. So I'm driving home, just broken up with, with an eye patch. And I'm like, you know what? I've been dieting to fit into this dress. I'm going to eat whatever I want. So I go through the drive-thru and I get my favorite crunchy onion rings. Well, they're so crunchy. The first bite I take chips my front tooth very noticeably. No. So I had a chipped front tooth and an eye patch <laughs> and I just got broken up with three weeks before my wedding. And I'm pretty sure that was the beginning of my villain era, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> but your thing's crazy too. Yeah, right. Store about pesto. Whew, crazy. <laughs> oh, the demon that has unleashed due to this store bought pesto video, I swear. Honestly, uh, at that point, I would just walk around and be a pirate. Like, you've already got the eye patch, you've got a chip tooth, you might as well take on a pirate accent too. You just got broken up with. If anyone is allowed to be a little Delulu and crazy, it is you, my dear, in that situation. Store about pesto. Susie, I don't know if I can top that, but I will say that last April, I decided I needed to break up with my law school boyfriend because number one, it was not a good relationship. And number two, I was beginning to realize I was not in fact pan, but a lesbian. So I decided I was going to go over to his house the day after he finished his law school exams and break up with him. And I did. And he seemed like he took it okay. He said that he understood and that even though he was sad, it seemed like I'd made up his mind. He took it pretty well. He was accepting, except he was not. He started texting me almost right away, pleading for another chance, saying that he could change for me. He sent me change what? That he Into made a woman? Photos of us set to sad music. He posted some of them on TikTok too. He sent me flowers and a sweater to my home address. He also contacted my mom and my friends, asking them to check up on me and make sure to take care of me because I was really special. All of this while I was asking for no contact. No contact at all for the rest of the summer. He broke that repeatedly. Then comes July, the biggest exam of our lives, the bar exam. I knew he was going to be there because there are only two places in the state that you can take it. 
and I saw him at the lunch break. I walked past him a bunch of times and I was like, okay, I guess I should acknowledge him. So I went up to him and I said, hey, I know that I've walked past you a bunch of times. I just wanna say hi. I don't think that we should talk anymore though. And he said, wait, no, I wanna talk to you. And he started crying and he tried to hold my hand. No. And he was telling me all about how he messed up so much in our relationship and he's changed and grown so much since then. And then I was pinned with him and couldn't get away because we were walking in a big crowd of people back into the room for the second session. At the end of the day, he tried to text me again. And I was like, hey, I don't think that we should be talking. I told you I wanted no contact and you breached that over and over. And he, at the end of the second day, he texted me and he was like, I can't do this anymore. You treat me like trash, have a good life human. And I was like, okay, if you need to be angry to move on, I guess that's fine. He did not move on because the next month on my TikTok, a lesbian who was a few years younger than me started commenting on my videos and then started DMing with me. And she was looking for advice because she was in a relationship with a man and thought maybe she was gay and should break up with him. So she was asking lots of details about my breakup. Oh, it was him. And how I oh, knew no, it was and when him. I knew and who I told. Oh. And I started to realize really quickly that this was a suspicious situation. So I had my friend suss it out for me. And she messaged this account using the first name of my ex. And immediately he confesses. He sends me a message from the lesbian account saying, hey, at least you didn't make a fake account like a crazy ex to try and be friends again. Also, he said something weird and encouraging, like whoever ends up with you is going to be so lucky. And I was like, please leave me alone. I texted his sister to tattle on him because she was the only family member I really had contact information for. So he was quiet for a little bit, except he wasn't because there was an Instagram account that was viewing all of my stories. And I was like, mm, really? Yeah. I messaged the account. Also, the account had the name of his aunt, which seems like a dumb name to pick if you're trying to catfish someone. <laughs> I messaged the account and I say, Let it are we go, really doing this again? Buddy. And then all of a sudden, the account disappears. And then... This one is oh, crazy. Oh, this one? There's an account that starts commenting on my TikToks. They're playing the long game this time. They're commenting on my TikToks saying things like, the lesbian master doc is problematic because it makes bisexual people think that they're lesbian. Or it'll be like encouraging me or saying that they understand my experience and what I'm going through. But it's kind of weird because they, again, seem like they know a little too much about my experience and I have not put all of it online. And so I start to get suspicious and I have followed the person back because we've commented back and forth so much. And so I start posting friends only videos that I think might trigger him. I know that's kind of mean, but it was for investigative purposes and it worked because then he texted me in response to one of the videos saying that he was not actually all that bad and so I was wrong to post uh... this. And I was like, gotcha. And I said, that's funny that you should say that because that was posted to friends only. So now I know that you're catfishing me again. And he said, no, I'm not catfishing you again. There's somebody who follows you who sends me screenshots of everything that you post. And I said, really, who is it? I knew exactly who it was because I'm still to this day, 99% sure it's him. And he says, oh, this is what their name starts with. And I don't have oh any proof God. of any of these messages because I delete all messages on my Instagram, right, TikTok, right, and right, phone. Right, right, right. So I don't have proof that yeah. they're sending them to me. But why would I lie about this? I wouldn't lie about this. Because you crazy. That's kind of funny because you've lied about it twice before. The other weird thing about this account is that the person's profile picture is a dead TikToker. I know that because I did a reverse image search to figure out if I could see if the person who they're claiming to be is actually them. It is clearly not. So I block that account and the account is now gone anyway. Things go quiet for a little bit, and then in December, he decides that he's going to ask out my best friend. Oh my I only gosh. have like three friends in the world, so it's kind of funny that he decides to ask out one of them. She says no, obviously, and then I tattle on him to his sister a second time. Then he goes quiet, and wouldn't you know it, I have come to find out that it's because he started this cycle all over again with another girl. Oh, geez. Be careful out there, because he is now back on the apps, and he also is on TikTok and has hundreds of men and women thirsting after him every day. Yeah, but pesto, like, that's crazy. <laughs> okay, so, one second. Girl, are you on a horse? <laughs> Anything is possible when your man smells like Old Spice and not a lady. I'm on a horse. Have you been on a horse this whole time? I feel... Another chance. I hear some clip clopping. for me. I feel like you're on a horse. Okay, now that that's out of the way. Wow, all of that because he couldn't come to terms with the fact that you realized that you were into women. Honestly, 
after a relationship with someone like that, I would probably be into women too. <laughs> It's a joke, it's a joke. You can't choose to be gay, Charlotte. Uh, I'm not choosing to be gay. I'm saying that I like women sometimes. Who says I'm gay? You are gay. All of that, because you hurt his ego, eh? The favorite part for me was- I can change, I swear. And it's like, babes, I'm a lesbian. I, I like women. I can, I can be a woman, I can change for you. POV, you lost your phone at the club last night. Let's go find it. Filed a police report. Decided to track it ourselves in the meantime. Tracked the phone to a sketchy gas station, but police got there too late. He told us it wasn't safe and to stop following them ourselves. While we're here, quick intermission. Laptop, phone, pity. Take two. When did it get so late? They stopped at McDonald's and finally ended up at this house. Decided to try our luck and knock on a few doors around where we tracked it to. The location wasn't accurate enough. Tried a few houses, but was mostly kids slash families. Back in the car, we see a Happy Meal in one of the houses across the street. Whoa! Too good of a coincidence not to check. We knocked and asked the residents what McDonald's they recently went to, and it happened to be the one we tracked earlier. And at the same time, they said the person that got the food had just stepped out, though. We ended up talking to a lady who said it was her stepson and we were looking for, and that she had problems with him like this in the past. She seemed apologetic. The laptop we were tracking with died, so we couldn't verify if the phone was still at the house or with the son that left. But we couldn't do much, so we told her we'd be back and exchange information. I love this like intense music. This is the kind of crazy I aspire to be. Checked a little later. They took it to a Walmart, which was closed. <laughs> they went to the Walmart. Never back down, never what? The phone is still at the Walmart. We're getting closer. Says we're right next to it. But big store, we can't find it. Checking through the jeans. Two hours later. Whoa. I am absolutely gobsmacked. You ladies are incredible. Most of us would have just taken the L on that one, but not you, not you ladies. I also find it amazing that you are the one that found it as opposed to the police. You know what I'm saying? You know what happened? He got in trouble when he got home. His aunt, the lady that you talked to was clearly angry, talked to him, and then he went and dropped it off in a location so that you wouldn't find out who he was. Woke up and his following went down by one. Following went down by one. I can understand going up by one, but why are we tracking the downs? Why are we why are we tracking the lost followers? Wait a second. Did I just admit to being crazy? <laughs> it makes sense to track, you know, he goes out for a night out and then he's suddenly got like two new followers that are women. But why down? Why why lost followers? Girl, put it in chat, GPT, copy paste all the names, then ask which one is missing next time you do it. <laughs> Wait, wait. Girl, make a separate Instagram and block everyone on his current following list so you can see all the new additions easily. Wow. Okay, but it's down by one, not up. No man in the world is worth this much energy. <laughs> like, again, if, if it's getting to this point, I feel like you guys should probably just break up. I'd rather be single. Yeah. Yeah, this is a lot of effort. Just make an Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> Y'all crazy. I'm crazy, but not that crazy. Okay, I'm not paying attention to the lost followers. Um his account. <laughs> Just checking to see if they've unfollowed me. <laughs> but I've never liked store-bought pets. I paid $450 to send a crate of bees to my ex's wedding. <laughs> and I'll do it again. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll cheer you on from the sidelines. Subscribe!